Hi, this is your host Dart and welcome to season 2 of Linux Renaissance. So I have done a little bit of rebranding and hopefully uh, it catches on this time. So uh, let's get started with a simpler uh, topic this time, at least for a uh, first episode. So my whole life uh, I have been primarily using uh, a multi-platform applications and um, basically this allows me to hop on to Windows and Linux and back and forth as much as I please and, and nothing in my workflow really changes much, right? And when I hear people asking me, like, uh, if I switch to Linux, can I use this application? Can I use this application? I mean, yeah, there are replacements for, you know, pretty much everything. Um, but, uh, you know, if you teach yourself to use applications in advance that are uh, multi-platform, then you will have less trouble if you decide to, you know, hop on to another uh, operating system, be it, you know, Mac or Linux or Windows, doesn't matter. So um, I got some notes here uh, about some of my applications that I use, for example, streaming, OBS Studio, because obviously it's one of the best tools for streaming and also multi-platform um, office okay this is um, this is uh, this is an interesting one because uh, a lot of people around me actually use Microsoft Office uh, because they don't really know they don't know they use it because everyone uses it so when I ask them some sub questions like what do you do with that so they say like I don't know I type documents and what, what kind of documents and turns out they type you know words <laughs> uh, so when, it, when when they need a spreadsheet what do you do with the spreadsheet well I don't know I, I don't know I, I calculate my expenses or something okay anything more advanced than that no so why do you use Microsoft Office w what's the uh, what's the idea why do you pay for that in between other you know reasons everyone uses that Microsoft Office is the best so okay <laughs> that's a that's a good reason I guess I mean if you want to drive yourself yourself from your home to your uh, office I suppose you need the best car available right yeah I use LibreOffice and why do I use LibreOffice because personally it's the best one for me not because it's free, not because it's multi-platform. Well, multi-platform might be another reason, but um, just a small example. I, uh, For work, I often need to export a certain, um, a certain um, list of users with some parameters. And I need to edit that in um, any CSV capable editor and basically spreadsheet is the best for that and then I need to save it back to CSV and import to wherever wherever I exported that from right and um, in Microsoft Office this looks like okay open up CSV and then everything is uh, in the first column then you need to select the first column then you need to tell it uh, go to the um, uh, tables or database or something uh, data I think and then you need to tell it to convert this um, column to something like table or I don't remember and then it asks you what's the delimiter then you tell it it's comma and then it opens up as it should then you edit that and when you need to save it will always save it as um, not as CSV, uh, it will not put comma as a delimiter, but something else, I think uh, semicolon. And why does it use semicolon? Because in Croatia we, um, we use semicolon for something that Windows thinks it should apply to CSV files through, I don't know, it's complicated. 
Uh, how does it look in LibreOffice? Well, I double click on the CSV file, it opens up in a spreadsheet mode as it should and, and I edit and then I click save and that's it. So why should I use Microsoft Office? I don't know. Uh, image editing. Okay, so this is also a popular one because a lot of people use Photoshop because Photoshop is the best. So what do I do with the Photoshop? Well, you know, I crop pictures. Okay, I see your point. Go use GIMP, please. Please. Web browsers. That's an easy one. Any is good as your personal preferences allow it. Um, all of them are pretty much uh, multi-platform except maybe um, Safari, but it's not really a, a topic, I think. Um, for archiving files, WinZip, WinRAR, 7-Zip, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I use 7-Zip on Windows, but on Linux it doesn't really matter. It's all integrated into KDA, KDA Plasma, into GNOME. Um, it, it doesn't change anything to my workflow. Um, antivirus, that's an interesting one. Should I, should, I, um, should I touch this topic when switching from Windows to Linux? No, okay, I, th I thought so. Okay, let's go to the next one. Video players. So VLC, I think it's the most popular one even on Windows maybe. Um, I don't know what to say about this topic uh, in, in particular, but you have it on, uh, you know, Mac, Windows, Linux, whatever you want. So if you're using something else, maybe you should reconsider. I don't know. It's a, it's a really practical player. So I, I don't, I, I never had a particular particular <laughs> reason to use anything besides that. Maybe, maybe in the previous age when uh, VLC wasn't that popular, maybe BS player was it? the name of a uh, popular one on Windows, but I haven't used that one for a long time. Audio editor. Okay, so people tend to use a lot of different paid audio editors and that's okay. However, Audacity is one of the most popular uh, free ones out there, also multi-platform, so I have been using that one for, I don't know, 10 plus years. W what is the reason not to use it? I don't know. Um, 3D editing. So when I was um, a teenager or something, my friends, uh, some of my friends were into 3D modeling and they, they, they ha had a hand for that, so to speak, and uh, basically all, all of them used 3D Studio Max, but I haven't heard of that one for a while, so my friends who do that now are into Blender for the most part, so there you go. Um, video editors, um, yeah, that, that's also a, a topic like a Photoshop one because a lot of people use uh, Adobe tools for a lot of stuff and um, they pay for that and then they use it like just a little bit, I don't know, for edi editing. Um, uh, um, it doesn't make too much sense, you know. Uh, for example, DaVinci Resolve. It's a pretty good editor. Uh, I mean, even even some um, big companies use it and um, it has a lot of features and uh, there is a free one and a paid one and I have been using a free one for quite a while and it, um, you know, takes care of all my needs and more. Um, and when I switched to Linux uh, permanently, I have uh, continued uh, to use it and then I switched my graphics card to Radeon and then I realized it doesn't really work with Radeon cards, so I, I kind of um, had a little problem here. Uh, but then I tried Blender. Uh, yeah, I see the way you're looking at me right now, but yeah, I used Blender uh, and it works okay for me, but Caden Live is a bit easier, uh, you know, to, to get your... Um, to get your mojo with, uh, and uh, basically I'm transferring uh, to that one now uh, and I think I'm I think I think I'm going to stay with uh, Caden live so for code editors um, also I, I don't think that's a 
that's actually a good topic because uh, programmers uh, tend to stick with what they want and do they don't really like changing but uh, Microsoft has a really good um, grasp on most of the programmers nowadays uh, with uh, you know Visual Studio Code so that one is available on whatever you want so that might be the answer password managers uh, that's also one of my topics um, something like 10 years ago uh, my uh, company back then was using key pass and that one is not multi-platform but uh, there are multi-platform versions of uh, third-party software that's compatible with key pass um, files uh, and basically when my company started using key pass i just uh, downloaded myself i think it was called key pass x and that was uh, that one was uh, multi-platform but uh, since then i switched to bitwarden and you know it's basically a web uh, application uh, for email okay this uh, might be uh, a little bit tied to which service you are using but you know most people nowadays are on gmail and um, uh, outlook.com and similar services so basically mozilla thunderbird uh, can have you covered and i think a lot of people use that on windows as well so um, i don't think i can add much value to 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 this topic um, unless you need uh, exchange then um, gnome evolution is pretty much the best uh, from my experience uh, on linux of course and on windows you can use microsoft outlook um, ebooks um, i don't think there's anything better than calibre and that one is also free so um, also multi-platform um, I don't think I even know any other application for ebooks. So th that one is pretty superb. It can convert between formats. You, you can use it with Kindle or whatever you like. Uh, messaging. I don't know what do you use for messaging nowadays. Skype, Telegram. These work on Linux, work on Windows. Um, WhatsApp and Viber. I don't know. I, do, I don't use Viber, but uh, WhatsApp is a web app. So it's pretty much what, what it is, right? Um, I don't know, so if you are a Windows user and uh, you're considering switching to uh, Linux, um, have you tried asking yourself, uh, can your workflow transfer to Linux and uh, how much of work will it be to, to you know, to, to adapt to a new environment? Because Linux as Linux is not that uh, hard it, it's actually easier than Windows in, in many regard, regards you know but uh, people usually get stuck on uh, application support so um, I mean for example uh, maybe just let me go back to, to one topic for, for a second um, Photoshop is one of the applications that uh, tend to be um, um, it's uh, it's often mentioned in the Linux world as a um, showstopper for many Windows users to transition. But I've noticed that Photoshop now has a web version, so I'm not sure how viable that is. Uh, but I believe that over the coming years, uh, Adobe will push their users uh, from uh, static uh, compiled application to their web version I suppose when when it picks up more features so I guess that's kind of a long-term answer to to that question right so if you're a Windows user and you are uh, wrecking your brain with uh, if your workflow will be able to able to handle the new operating system maybe you should attempt to transfer your workflow right now not to Linux, but to, you know, uh, multi-platform applications one by one and see how that goes for you. And once you're done with that, you can just switch to Linux in one night and I don't expect you will feel anything, you know. Um, I don't know. I, I hope this is a 
easy enough topic for my uh, season two, you know. And uh, if you have any comments, I would, uh, you know, love to hear about it, read about it in the comments below. Uh, maybe uh, to catch up uh, with some of you guys who, who subscribed like a year ago and never got a third episode. Uh, but I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I will um, do my best to stick with it this time and um, wish me luck. And uh, thank you for watching and see you next week. Goodbye.